In this video lesson, we review the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and we look at the luminosity-mass relationship for main sequence stars. Reviewing the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, remember we have luminosity plotted on the vertical on this axis of the logarithmic scale, and on the horizontal we have surface temperature, and temperature increases as you move to the left on the horizontal axis. All the stars on the main sequence are predominantly burning hydrogen and helium in the core. And those main sequence stars are referred to as dwarfs. So here's our sun, a yellow dwarf. Though called a blue dwarf, this star is about eight times the mass of our sun. Most of the stars out there, about 70%, are very dim, low surface temperature stars called red dwarfs, not visible by the naked eye. These very hot and dim collection of stars are called white dwarfs. And what differentiates them from red and yellow, orange and blue dwarfs is there's no longer any fusion happening in the core of these stars. Brown dwarfs are found farther along the main sequence. And brown dwarfs are stars that never had enough matter to sustain fusion. In star formation, mutual gravitational attraction pulls hydrogen nuclei together. As hydrogen nuclei lose gravitational potential energy, they move around faster, they heat up. The gas becomes more dense. This coming together of matter, called the protostar phase, happens over millions of years for a typical star. If there's enough matter there, then a sufficient temperature will be reached in the core of that protostar phase that will support fusion of hydrogen, and a star is born. Sometimes there's not enough matter there to sustain the fusion process. So for masses less than about 0 0.08 solar masses, uh, we end up getting a brown dwarf. For protostar masses greater than about 0 0.08 solar masses, uh, we can sustain nuclear fusion in the core and we end up getting a main sequence star, a dwarf, either red, orange, yellow, blue, depending upon how much mass is there. Another possibility for this protostar phase is there's insufficient matter there, no fusion starts at all, and we end up with a gas giant, a planet. Back to the HR diagram, the giants represent a collection of stars that are very bright uh, but cooler. So we have red giants or orange or yellow giants. And as we get hotter, we can move more to the left and we get uh, blue giants. Also off the main sequence are the super giants, the most massive stars. As white dwarfs cool and, and emit lesser and lesser radiation, they eventually will become black dwarfs. The uh, universe is not old enough to have any black dwarfs yet. We're familiar with the HR diagram where luminosity is plotted on the vertical and temperature on the horizontal. Temperature axis increasing as you move to the left. But you could also plot mass on the vertical instead of luminosity and stellar class O all the way to M on the horizontal. And that would give you that same characteristic uh, spread for the main sequence stars. Well, we know mass means everything for a star. It dictates how powerful the star is, its luminosity. It also dictates how long the star will live. For main sequence stars, there's a, a relationship between the mass of the star and its luminosity. And that is that the luminosity of a main sequence star is directly proportional to its mass to the exponent 3.5. And that m to the 3.5 means just a small change in mass is going to make for a significant change in power or luminosity. We can always replace that direct proportionality with equals some constant k. And so we got L equals k times m to the 3.5 and, and solving for k we get L over m to the 3.5. That means every L and every luminosity and mass combination for a star um, should satisfy the same k value. So that means we can write, write a proportion. In this case, L over M to the 3.5 for some star equals L of the sun over mass of the sun to the 3.5. Here's a sample question. Uh, main sequence star is six times the mass of our sun. Estimate the star's luminosity. So here's the sun and here's our star, six times mass of the sun. And I see I've left out the M to the 3 halves uh, on the right hand side in the proportion. We'll fix that later. Solving for L, I get L equals 6 
mass of the sun all to the 3.5 divided by mass of the sun to the 3.5 times luminosity of the sun. And my mass of the sun to the 3.5 cancels out. So I get luminosity or L equals 6 to the 3.5 times the luminosity of the sun. That's about 529 luminosity of the sun. And rounding it to one sig fig, um, the luminosity of the unknown star is equal to about 500 times the luminosity of the sun. So you can see a, a six times change in mass equals a 500 times change in luminosity. Summarizing the main points of this video lesson, we looked again at the HR diagram, luminosity plotted on the vertical, temperature on the horizontal, temperature increases to the left, and we have a main sequence showing with the thick gray line here and some types of stars encircled in gray. We learned that you could plot mass instead of luminosity and stellar class instead of temperature and still get the same Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Of course, those are white dwarfs in the bottom left corner. Up at the top, supergiants. Below that, giants. And in the bottom right corner, red dwarfs. And for main sequence stars, the relationship between luminosity and mass is luminosity is directly proportional to mass to the exponent 3.5. Probably easier when it's written that as a proportion, L over M to the 3.5, and comparing it to that for the sun, equals L naught, luminosity of the sun, over mass naught, mass of the sun, to the 3.5. All right, let's try a practice problem. For which one of the following star types is the relative luminosity and surface temperature correct? And so we have um, four star types here, white dwarf, a blue giant, a red giant, and a red dwarf. And relative to one another, luminosity L and temperature T, lowest, highest, 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 lowest, etc. Pause your viewer and try this question. Going back to the HR diagram, we can see that blue giants of the four uh, groups of stars here. Blue giants have the highest luminosity, highest temperature. Red dwarfs, lowest luminosity, lowest temperature. Our answer is B. Blue giant, highest luminosity, and highest temperature. For practice question number two, we're given a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram in the bottom left and three stars placed on the main sequence, the sun being the star in the middle. And we're given uh, four statements here, and the question is which statement is not correct uh, four statements concerning masses and luminosities. Pause your viewer and try this question. Knowing that mass or L, luminosity, can be on the vertical axis here, that tells us that A is correct and C is correct. And D uses the relationship between luminosity and mass for main sequence stars, so D is correct, compares star B and star R. The answer is B.